Hey, 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 my name is Postlinks. Welcome to Katawa Shoujo. I'm starting rather late. I mean, I had to do the pickup from the post office for a fifth volume of Bakamon Kadari. Uh, so I guess I'll be reading this as well later or tomorrow. But also had to edit a video. Technically short one, but it rendered for a while because it was like filled with effects and so on so it's normally a 30 minute video for youtube renders for 25 minutes this one was like five minute video and it was rendering for 37 minutes <laughs> funny funny but yeah because it was like super highly edited over here you i don't really add stuff like i did there but that's not really very important as it's not really related to the channel anyway the snap of my mobile phones closing contrast with the ambient chatter and noise audibly in the hallway outside the library it's the first day of the summer holidays a time that had perpetually seemed so far away and yet it's now not only here but also made painfully obvious by the students or lack thereof left in the school most students have returned home to spend the holidays with relatives by now. The few that are left are mostly chatting between themselves, usually about what they intend to do in the coming weeks. It makes feel like the odd one out for taking advantage of the school library being open for the first several days of the holidays. Ostensibly, it's for the students to drop off any books they borrowed and have yet to return. And Oh, no, no, I did not want to click. Uh, and for those who have their parents pick them up to help pass the time until they get whisked away. Now that I think about it, I mean, I know it was a thing in high school. I don't know if it was in earlier stages of my schooling. If you didn't return books, before the end of the year you'd be put back a year well, actually not put back but you would have to repeat the year which is kind of ridiculous not gonna lie uh, yeah even though they barely had any books there that's also the most ridiculous thing they had the worst school library I've ever experienced I, I, I had like small libraries in primary school and later junior high school or if you call it middle school but they had some other stuff as well but the one in high school was worthless of sorts not to mention the amount of books they had was so small that even if you wanted to get the book you are supposed to like read and later talk about in the polish class they wouldn't have it so you had to get the books from elsewhere anyway which sucked uh, but yeah and i'm pretty sure actually no actually that was a fact as well in you i mean in universe in you in the university of course it makes sense like you had to literally get the confirmation from every single library that is in your university that you brought back the books. I've never actually taken a single one from university for. Uh, now I'm kind of curious for if they had any manga there somewhere. But I will not find out unless for some reason I will go back. Thanks to the recent lefty phone call from my parents, which had so rudely woken me from my sleeping on a beanbag at the back of the library. They had those beanbags in my university, actually, yeah. Uh, for technically not in library, but in library's computer room. I'm now in the latter category. Slide my phone back into my pocket. This time, remembering to set it to silent, I go back into the quiet and holy place it's room. It's a nostalgic sight, just as when Lee first led me to the library, the orange tint of sunset baths the room in its light, 
while Hanok sits on a beanbag signed to reading and Hugo fuses, just barely visible behind the counter. Hanako especially has been noticeably more quiet than usual since yesterday's happenings, but I can't really blame her. Oh, I was supposed to... Hmm. Okay, I will do this later. I need to change a little bit the arrangement on the desk. On When it comes to monitors and actually the webcam. So, soonish you will see a different view. I kind of would like to change the entire thing for, but I don't have the place to like fit the desk the, the way I would want to. Like I would like to actually go this way instead of being by the wall, you know, would be cool. But unfortunately this desk is so freaking white that it doesn't fit with the bed being where it is. <laughs> Ridiculous, I know. But can't help it. Anyway, it was just that depended on that person after all. I quite walked back to the beanbag near her where I'd said before, being doubly careful not to make any unnecessary noise. The soft poof it gives as the bag takes my wave makes Hanako's eyes flick towards me, but only for a second. I get a feeling that Hanako's been quite only partly out of sadness following Lily's departure. Rather, she seems more thoughtful and measured than I'd expected. Perhaps due to her desire of working out how to deal with Lee's leaving rather than just being depressed over it. It makes a little... me a little proud of her. Well, yeah. Hey, Hanako. Yeah. So going ahead with your idea of traveling? She gives a determined nod. Hmm. I'll be starting in a day or two. I'll be decided to come with me too. Nice. Well, quick start. Where are you to head at first? I think we are going to start by going north, then look down, then go southward. So, Hokkaido is going to be first. I will go there. She gives an air dot, more tentative than the last. The significance of the place is not lost on either of us. Do you know how we are going to handle the traveling expenses and accommodations? Yeah, I've worked everything out. I think it should be okay. Naomi says she has her side worked out too. Uh, you know that if you need anything, you can call me, okay? I gave my number before. Any time of the day is fine. She gives a smile, which in itself feels like a small personal victory. I know. Thanks, Hisa. Maybe Lily was right. Although I may offer Hanako any help I can possibly give, I feel as if I know she doesn't need it. She really has grown. Yeah. Hanako's plans for the holidays are in sharp contrast to my simple following of my parents' suggestion to stay with them. Holidays had always made me feel less excited than most. Four, so maybe this is just a return to the status quo. Before my heart attack, I'd always lived so aimlessly that holidays weren't all that much different from my everyday life anyway. After school, I'd wander around a bit in the city often hanging out with some friends, before making my way home to eat dinner with uh, usually one of my parents, but rarely both. Their work schedule didn't, have, didn't leave much time for them to be home, and going there straight from school would just have meant I'd end up feeling bored. I was an urbanite through and through. Since COVID in it feels like I fundamentally changed as a person. The phone call with my parents erased my, any traces of doubt I might have held on that. In any case, while before I had exercised a fairly normal level of independence for a teenager, that being not a whole lot, my parents were more than pleased to hear of my newfound ability in taking care of myself. Laundry, cooking for myself, cleaning, all in addition to other general chores that come from living without parents around. Just little manual things I've had to pick up, but with relative ease. When I think about it, I'd always depended on them, even they hadn't been at home, all the time. To say I never depended on anyone after moving to the Yamaku dormitories would be far from the truth. That's... yeah. Hey, excuse me. The two of us look up at the awkwardly fidgeting figure in front of us. Some things never change. It's getting close to closing time, so... uh. 
Oh right, I'd forgotten that the library closes earlier during the holidays. Hanok and I both get up and dust ourselves off, placing our books back on the shelf behind us. The fact that our tastes in reading material have a fair amount of overlap is useful at times. With bow to Yuko to apologize for taking so much time, Hanako takes her leave of us. Uh, yeah, someone should teach people how to do it when someone tells you that it's closing time. You know, because <clears throat> looking at you, people who enter the restaurant at the last freaking closing hour or any kind of store and don't want to get out. Yeah, if you are told that, you just get out. Anyway, see you tomorrow, Hisa. Bye. And then they walk the same path. And with that, she walks out of the large wooden aging doors that herald the entrance to the library. Oy, 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 oy. She's a quiet person, isn't she? I suppose I should be surprised at a staff member sharing personal opinions like this, but after knowing Hugo for a while, it's largely expected. Our relationship is more personal, rather than one with her acting as an authority. I mean, authority figure. Yeah, I think that's just how she is. She's got a lot more confidence in herself these days, for. I know her as well as you do, but I think I agree. It's nice her talking to people here. She never used to do that before. Hey, Yuko. You know about Lily's leaving, right? She told me herself a few days ago. It must be her leaving everyone behind like she is. She quickly looks back to me after she says this, probably remembering that I went to her for advice on the relation between Lily and me before. Yeah. Ah, 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 are you going to be okay? That's a difficult question. It's something I'd rather not think about for now, for given more pressing issues. Something seems kind of off about this whole deal, don't you think? Yuka appears to think for a while, absent-mindedly scrunching her face up in a variety of creative ways as she does so. I don't think I'll know her well enough to make that kind of judgement. I'm sorry I can't be more help. Nah, that's fine. I'm just sort of thinking loud. I give a deep sigh. <sighs> and scratch my head in frustration. There's just so much stuff happening at once that I have no control over. It, it feels like I'm being swamped. I think everyone goes through times like that. What's important is to concentrate on what you can do, rather than what you can't do. At least that's how I see it. If I didn't think like that, I don't think I'd be able to manage my life as this. She said, she says it with a smile and a light tone, but her words are from, from any kind of joke, being pulled between two jobs as she is, just to be hopefully able to make enough money not only to leave but also for university, must be exhausting. Free education bonsai! <clears throat> Perhaps that's why, coming from her, this feels like it has more meaning than if it had come from most others. I guess you've got a point there. Thank you for your advice once again. Wait, now that I think about it, you have to pay for university in Japan? Is Japan... Is university free? Oh, okay. So, it kind of... Uh, okay, generous scholarship for low-income families, that's nice. I actually never looked into this, not gonna lie. Uh, private institutes charge up annually and... Okay, but that's for all the people. I'm curious about like per one person. I don't know. I I will. Okay, let's leave this freaking bookmark. Uh, and I will look into it later. I'm curious. Anyway, 
Thank you for your advice. Once again, Yuka. Hey. She bows deeply and smiles again, before making her way back to the counter where she spent so much of her time. The tiny wings of the cardboard crane in my fingers are only just visible in the dim light of my room. Just a little of the moonlight being able to peek through the curtains and around their edges. I lie still in my dark bed for a long time, idly looking up at the little origami bird. It feels like a lot's happened since Lily folded this, but at the same time it feels like very little has changed. Compared to everyone else, I'm back to square one. I might have found... Actually, I might have a newfound idea of where I want to go in life, but that's hardly something that affects me now. Hanako changed. I know that much. If anything, she just makes me feel like I've got an excuse to be like this considering her previous situation. Lily fall. I turned the bird in my fingers another way, looking at it from yet another angle. And there is a message there. Of sorts. <laughs> just kidding. Probably not. When I first met her, she seemed aloof and perhaps somewhat distant. Her actions were always careful, measured and precise. And her carefully maintained composure always gave the appearance of unnearing confidence and serenity. In time, she became less formal. Just a bit, but enough. It felt good to see her lowering her inhibitions around me and opening up, even just a little, of her own accord. It felt as if I was seeing her real self slowly become more vibrant and visible. Now for, I begin to have doubts. Perhaps they are to be expected after what this, effectively the two of us breaking up. They don't feel new or strange for, but rather like an old book being found and dusted off. I soon realized after meeting Lee that she saw me as she did Hanako, as someone who needed help and care. At first I simply thought that we'd be fine as friends, helping each other through our limited time together in school. But then I began to treasure our moments together more and more. From our quiet walks to our talking over lunch, the good sides of her personality became even more obvious and ever more likable. But then I began to treasure our moments together even more and more. And I read this line already, I'm so dumb. The absence caused by Lee's trip to Scotland to visit her long distant family and sick aunt only made me realize how much I actually forgot about the aunt. Made me realize how much I like just being around her. And I have thought that she felt a similar way. For, for her fault, maybe that wasn't everything to our relationship. Even after she returned to Japan, that just meant she lost her family once again after meeting them for such a brief moment. Never mind. She lived so much of her life without her family around. Not to mention with Akira working long hours. That she had little choice but to be like that. I had thought her sense of independence to be a good and admirable trait. It was in stark difference to my reliance on my parents before my heart attack. As reluctant as I may have been to admit it. However, it also meant that she never let people get too close to her. She lost her family likely due to her blindness went to a different school from anybody she knew because of it, and worked all the harder to make sure she didn't end up a burden on her sister and those around her. And now, Akira's going to Inverness, just like the family she thought she lost. She never told me of her plans, as conflicted as she was about them. Lily didn't want to be a burden on anyone, including me. I'm an idiot. I never questioned it. I never tried to be the rask when she needed me to. I just set my life up and expected it to stay that way forever. With the two of us having a nice, long relationship where we pushed forward toward our future together. A small pit of frustration and anger at myself wells up in my chest. Yeah, it's the worst feeling, ain't it? But also it's the best because it actually gets you to work. I just let everything happen, never even trying to help Lily. 
Just her being there was enough. I thought I could keep going on it if that were true. But that could never have been enough. It was childlike dependence on somebody, without an attempt to understand or help their situation. Thanks to that, I lost Lily. I lost the one person I loved most because I wasn't there for her when she needed me. Dude, you haven't lost her. Let's face it, you can do it, man. I believe in you. With an increasingly angry feeling washing over me, I turned over and set the crane back on the desk, next to my clock. The place where it has lived since that day when she folded it for me. Since that day when she herself said that my burdens needn't be my own. The obnoxious bright red numerals of my alarm clock shine through the darkness of the room onto my tired eyes. 10 o'clock. Evening. Curfew will be soon. I wonder... I can't mention that be leaving this evening. I have no idea actually when their flight is, but... That means there is a chance, however small, that they might not have left... yet. Adrenaline starts to move through my body as I sit up on my bed. My ass suddenly wide with possibility. There is no guarantee they haven't left. Indeed, it's likely that they already have. But there is also a chance they haven't. However small it may be. How? Oh, maybe there was a delay to the flight. You never know. Just like this. Just this once. Just as I should have before. I stand up and rush over to my cabinet, throwing out some clones as fast as I can and slide them on in quick succession. Each second that goes by is a second that I can't regain, a second that might mean, the difference between catching them and losing them forever. Even if I fail, I have to try. I can't let her leave everything behind without even trying to stop her. Without just this once being there for her. With the last of my clothes slipped on, I hastily grabbed the phone of the desk. Luckily, the number for local taxi company is still in my call history. T -t 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 a gruff, unenthusiastic voice announces the name of the company while I pace around the room. It takes some effort to slow down my voice and keep it clear over the phone. A chilly night. Air sweeps against me as I open the dormitory door, but nevertheless, I keep up my brisk speed as I half jog, half run out of the school gate. It may not be the curfew just yet, but it's precariously close. If there were a guard around, they no doubt have some questions for me, but it looks like I've managed to come out just before they arrive, or they're around the corner. My pace picks up as I make my way through the school gardens. Their nighttime allure all but lost when I begin to run the school gate. The lamps of the courtyard, dim as they are, provide just enough illumination to light the way and prevent me from tripping over. The buildings themselves take on a rustic, almost antique looking edge when I glance at them. Looking back, it seems strange. Dude, you observe way too much, just go for it. Looking back, it seems strange that they once appeared so dark and looming to me. Now they just look to be somewhat anachronistic school buildings. The same as any other bar their age. Leaving the gates behind me, I pull up to a stop just before the taxi. Parked just as Akira's car had been. It's gaudy and brightly lit sign looks out of place in a quiet country backdrop. I impatiently squeeze myself through the door, giving the driver the address for where the two should hopefully be staying. Oh, okay, she's in that house. Yeah, I think by the time the taxi pulls up after its trip at mundanely casual speed, it's well and truly deep into the night. The house is truly enormous, its sheer size much larger than I expected and ominously still. Fearing the worst, I ask the driver to stay just in case my efforts are for naught. A single press on the fancy intercom system outside the gate produces a short electronic bell in the otherwise silent road. It's not long before a somewhat deep groove voice can be heard from it. This is the Hakamichi residence. Please state your name and why you're bothering us this late. I press on this by the inwardly wincing at the reasonable annoyance audibly in his voice. Uh, is he son okay? uh, I was hoping to meet Lady or Akira, if they are still here. Surprisingly, I managed to someone quite some energy to my voice, enough to make the other side of the intercom silent. 
few seconds passed, but just before I press the button again and ask what's going on, a light turns on outside the front door. I stare my eyes to try and make out who is coming through, but as he comes past a large parked car with fishing rod sticking out in the back, his identity becomes clear. His face is typically placid and emotionless as he saunters up to the gate. He's still childlike in his mannerism despite his manner. With the press of a few buttons from behind the vents, the gate slowly opens. Hey Saur, what are you doing here? I think this is the most emotion I've ever heard from his voice. Not that it would be hard to reach that mark. Uh, yeah, Akira told me that she and Lily would be staying here before they left for their flight. I need to talk to Lily just one last time. Are they still here? The look on his face says everything. I failed. I was too late. The one time when I actually needed to act quickly and... Actually, it's possible. What? What? What is it? He's a bit taken aback by my fear, but I can't help it at this point. They left not long ago. Only a few minutes before you have arrived. In fact, if you go straight to the airport, you might be able to... He's a... I turn back towards the witty taxi, grabbing what little money is left in my pocket as I go. Thanks, Hidaki! With that, I take a seat and in short order, bark out my destination. I mean, technically, could have just go straight there, but. My chest beats widely as I tear down the street. My body's twisting this way and that to slip between the pedestrians walking back and forth beside me. There are a lot of them, by the way, at night. We've their road. Solidly blocked by taxis and other cars dropping off passengers and picking up others in the time they have to wait. We ended up having to stop almost a block away. But that's in the past now. What matters now is reaching Lily. One foot hits the ground. The other quickly following without the slightest thought. As if my legs have taken on a life of their own and all my mind can do is concentrate on the view ahead of me. Just one glimpse of that long hair of hers. That long yellow hair that was the same color as the wet that stretched as far as the eye could see. In the end, I depended on Lily, just like Hanako did. Even after we started going out, it still doesn't feel like she really ever let herself depend on me. Except for one moment. That one moment where we held each other tightly on that bright yellow field. At the time, she must have feared losing me just as she did everyone else. That's why. Just this once. The night air wraps around me, draining every last remnant of warmth out of my body, to the extent that it feels more like midwinter than a summer night. My fingers, my hands, my feet, they all feel increasingly cold. The sound of the passing crowd is reduced to no more than a background hum, while the sound of my shoes hitting the pavement echoes loudly, every step surging towards the person I have to catch. Forced by my chest tightening in response to the cold of the night, I rest an arm over it to try and settle it down. When the airport comes into view, I realize this feeling as one I felt before. Not now. Of all the times for this, please, not now. I take a gulp and soldier on regardless, pushing my body as far as it will go. Sweat pours off me as I hurdle toe forward, my shoulder hitting someone's side and my mind suddenly folding, I mean flooding, with emotions and memories. I continue on without apology. I have to keep moving on. If I stop now, I'm not sure I could begin again. Even if I could, it would be all for naught if I'm not in time. I hit another person, then another, offering little resistance to getting bounced about. My feet fill up, my arms are losing all feeling. My chest forces me to hunch over awkwardly, tightening ever more. That afternoon in the snow, the time when my life irreversibly changed. Images of Iwanako and the damn letter flash over and two over in my mind. The first love I lost thanks to my condition. But. It was her that was in love. You weren't even in a relationship, man. I can't let that happen again. I don't care what happens to me anymore. I just need to see her one last time. There! 
A sliver of yellow and white comes into view, some distance down the road, her figure silhouetted by the lights emanating from the airport entrance. Lily! Lily! Or something! Stop, please, Lily! Come on, I know you're hearing fire far beyond no. A boom! My view suddenly spins out of control and ends up on the ground. My body haphazardly sprawled after hitting someone and stumbling over. Before I can assess the damage, an unbelievable pain ignites in my body. All of my thoughts are blanked as I curl up and frantically clutch at my chest. Hey, hey, are you okay? It was a really bad fall. This pain I can't. <sighs> Any sharp knock could do me in. Any overexertion. I thought I could overcome my limits this once. Let's do it. Something's wrong with him. What's the matter? Are... The voices of those gathering around me are gradually replaced by loud ringing in my ears. By now, I am able to move my head. My eyes turn upwards to see the mute moving of their lips. Even as I touch my chest, I realize I can't feel my fingers anymore, nor my feet. It feels like my entire body is shutting down, starting from my extremities. With one last effort, I turn my head down the road towards the airport entrance that's casting its light over me. Lee's there, behind the crowd. Her head is tilted, but only just slightly. I can feel my vision dimming as I tried to yell out, but nothing emerges from my mouth, despite my best efforts. Slowly but surely, my vision begins to black out the scene before me. So this is how it ends. Imagine if for the entire time in the videos, I put in the title, you know, least good ending. But I actually lied about all of that. <laughs> That would be nasty, wouldn't it? I failed. I was so close. So very close. But the very last moment my condition saved my chance at a new life and dragged me back. Now, I'm going to die. Sprawled out just matters from an airport. With a crowd of bubbling people around me and with Lily leaving for Scotland. Just a little distance ahead. Lily. That last word extinguishes the last of my energy. The word falls into a deep, inescapable blackness as every muscle in my body shuts down. I'm sorry, Lily. I was too late. See you in hospital in the next episode <laughs> or something. Uh, yeah, let's do it like this. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you there.